Hello, Potato. Today is March the 26th, and this is Quarantine Log 6. And today, we're doing another Lego kit. We're going back to a small set. Set 70823, Emmett's Thricycle from Lego Movie 2. I don't have a lot of the uh, Lego Movie 2 kits, not compared to what I had of the Lego Movie 1 ones. I had almost all the Lego Movie 1 kits. But the Lego Movie ones just weren't as exciting. I do have a few of them. I have, like, Emmett's House. And I have... Um, I think Ultra Kitty... Oh, goody. Stickers. Always my favorite. I have the... Uh, I think the Ultra Kitty, aside from this one now, is the only one I've actually put together. And Ultra Kitty is in my, my normal spring display. We have two bags. 174 pieces, so it's going to be a little bit bigger than um, than the Mandalorians or the Drag Racer. But still pretty small. I think we can keep it under half an hour. Um, but actually, if someone is, well, I have a bunch of the Lego Movie 1 kits in my spring display. Um, including the the plumbing truck, the one that's supposed to turn into a spaceship. I prefer it as a plumbing truck because it just looks nice on the street. I have the ice cream truck too. They have a new ice cream truck and I was thinking of getting that for the carnival, but I don't really need another ice cream truck. I, I really do like the one that came out for Lego Movie, which interestingly, I have seen a knockoff of it available on Wish. You can buy a fake Lego Movie ice cream truck. So our first bag here is going to be just this little accessory gas pump thing and the giant Duplo block. And the second bag is going to actually be the tricycle. But how have you all been doing? Um, I actually have ventured out of the house for a couple times the last couple days. Um, yesterday morning after shooting yesterday's video. Um, I went out and worked in the backyard a little bit because it's massively overgrown. It's a little less massively overgrown now. But our green waste bin is full. So it is going to have to stay that way a little bit longer. But yeah, we are, our, our rose bushes were massively overgrown and kind of blocking the walkway. And there were some of those big prickly like dandelion weeds I pulled out just to get them out. They are now in our green waste bin, waiting for, I hope next, hope Monday is a, next Monday, well next Tuesday, I hope is a, hope next week's a green waste week basically is what I'm trying to say. Because that way, I mean, if I'm still, if I'm still off, I, th I think I'm supposed to be off through Tuesday, of course Tuesday's a holiday anyways, so I'll definitely be off on Tuesday, Tuesday is Cesar Chavez Day. So that, you know, I definitely will be off then. But, yeah, hopefully uh, I will be able to go and maybe do a little more work back there next week. But, aside from that, we actually did go and do some shopping. Um, went out yesterday, and went to Sam's Club both times, basically. Went out yesterday and got them about yeah, half hour, 45 minutes after they opened. I was able to get paper towels, which is good because we were running a little low on those. Not like dire or anything, but but a little low. And I got some milk, which they had plenty of. They had plenty of Last week, last like Thursday, I think it's the last time I'd, we'd been there. Wednesday. No, last Wednesday was the last time we'd been there. Um, yeah, they were out of a lot of stuff. Uh, yesterday and today even less so. Not so much. Um... They had plenty of milk and eggs yesterday. They're limiting how much you can get. It's like one package per person, which should be fine for most of us. And um, toilet paper and paper towels are the same. Um, I missed out on toilet paper yesterday. Um, I did I did manage to get some paper towels. I got there like just after they ran out of toilet paper because there were still people in the, in the club um, with it in their cart. So I really, like, I just missed it by probably a few people. Um, they're limiting how many people you can can, can, uh, can come in at a time. I don't know what the number actually is, but 
when I got there yesterday, they were practicing a, you know, one card out, one card in kind of a thing. So I had to wait a little bit. Not, not like an obnoxious amount of time or anything. I'm not, I'm not going to go full Karen about it or anything. You know, it's not, it's not like Shop Disney or something, something important. Um, which, uh, which hopefully, um, maybe Saturday's log, maybe tomorrow, but maybe Saturday's log will actually get to be about the main, Minnie Mouse Main Street, Minnie Mouse, the main attraction. That's it. My, like I said, my wife was successfully able to order those. Um, and they're supposed to arrive tomorrow, but I'm kind of hoping maybe today. Or at least maybe early enough tomorrow that I can do them in tomorrow's quarantine log. I, I have still heard nothing about myself having to return back to work yet. So, but if not tomorrow, probably Saturday. Sunday will just be a normal video. There'll be no quarantine log on Sunday, no matter what's going on. There'll be a normal video on Sunday. I need to record something for next week, though. I haven't recorded anything for next week. For next Saturday. Next Sunday. Is that right? That's right. Why is that so much tighter than that? Anyways, anyways, though. Back to, uh, back to venturing out. Um, have I turned over two pages here? I have. So we went out again today in the hopes of actually getting some toilet paper. And we got there before opening. And it was, a. Uh, it's not as fun waiting out in front of the, uh, Sam's Club as it is waiting out in front of the Disney store, I'll tell you that. But... We got there, we were in like the second group allowed, and they were doing one of those elderly hour days today. So people of age of 60 were being allowed in first, but they didn't take all the, uh, they didn't take all the toilet paper. They actually had two brands, they had store brand and, uh, and I think it was Cottonelle, maybe it was Angel Soft. They had another brand in any case. Um, yeah, so that was, that was good. They weren't, I mean, I'm sure they're out by now, by the time I'm recording this, certainly by the time it's released, they'll be out. But they had some this morning. So I mean, if you if you go out and do your shopping early, and they have little little lines on the floor by the registers. Not that they have enough people in the store that there should really be a line, but they have little lines on the floor by the registers. And he is done. The little eye, googly eye. Um, so that you know, if you are, if there's a line, you can stand far enough away. From the other people. These pages are sticking together. There you go. So yeah, I've got some necessities. And again, they actually had more stuff today than they had yesterday. Today they actually had uh, lunch meats. Yesterday they were the whole lunch meat area was still like completely empty. But nope, today today was good. We got what we what we went in for, and then some. Otherwise, just been uh, been sheltering in place, posting food pictures, watching a lot of Murder She Wrote on YouTube, and yeah, nothing, nothing too much going on. Been playing Red Dead Redemption Two, uh, kind of off and on, and uh, that's quite a good game. I mean, it's almost it took me a little bit to realize. It was a prequel to Red Dead Redemption, not a sequel. Because I kept... For some reason, at first I thought when, you know, John Marston was showing up, like, oh, I thought his name was Jack. And then I realized that Uncle was still there. I was like, oh, well, I know Uncle. Spoilers if you haven't played a ten-year-old game. Um, I know that Uncle... Don't think survives RDR1. And then I realized that, oh... Jack, the, the little kid Jack, is the Jack from RDR. And this is John Marston, the player character from RDR. But some interesting things. I'm, I think it says I'm like 65% of the way through. Um, honestly, there's a sequence in it. I'm going to you know, try not to spoil because I know the, the game itself is less than a year old. But there's a sequence in it involving being in the swamp with a 
giant crocodile, which is legitimately tense. I mean, it's there's moments of the game that are intense just because, you know, there are 60 people trying to shoot you in the face. And this wasn't that. This was more of this was more of a uh, horror. Frankly, I I thought things were going to go much bad, more badly for the uh, characters than they did because I was getting a real jaws vibe. It actually for 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 a game that is and yeah, you know, a little spoiler here is ultimately kind of a, at least it certainly seems like it's going that direction, kind of a tragedy. Um, that was a. It's got some some really varied moments in it. Okay, it's just like that. Um, there's a little silliness. I mean, it's a Rockstar game. You have to expect a little bit of that. Um, lots of lots of just intense, senseless violence. But it's good. I'm enjoying it. Of course, naturally, you have to do what they do in all Rockstar games now. You have a section involving racing, and you have to have a section involving radio-controlled vehicles. Because even in the Old West, Rockstar manages to shoehorn that stuff, and I think, I really think it's just, it's a revenge for people complaining about the radio-controlled sections in uh, GTA San Andreas, because those were awful. Those were, and I, I think that actually wasn't even a section you absolutely had to complete to beat the game, but those are why I never finished the game. I, uh, I just disliked those portions so much and it's, it's a shame because, you know, some great actors in there. But yeah, I just so, so passionately disliked the uh, radio control missions that I just, I abandoned the game. I never have finished it. Which is, which is probably a shame. Because it was a good game. Alright, so, oh, I know. I said before I was going to talk about Podcasts. Because you know you may have observed, may have observed, you may have run through your um, your supply of YouTubers that you like. Maybe there's just nothing on Netflix or Disney Plus that's keeping your attention. Although after watching Murder She Wrote, um, we did watch last week. You watched uh, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks on Disney Plus, and that's still a classic movie. There are some um, some parts of that movie that that maybe have not aged well. I'm thinking in particular. The uh, Portadello Road sequence with the Indian dancers, who are very clearly, at least some of them are very clearly, uh, white people in brown face. Yeah, that's that's not great. I don't know that that was even great then. I'll do to be fair. As a child, I never noticed. Um, but as an adult, oh yeah, I notice. Oh yeah, I notice. Got our first sticker on there for the. Gas pump. What's the little logo supposed to be? I guess it's supposed to be the Octane logo, but it looks like... It looks like a mouse crossed with a beetle. Like a computer mouse, not a, not a rodent mouse. But still a good movie. Still holds up. The effects in it are still pretty good. Not all of them. Um... But yeah, it's still a, still a fun and enjoyable movie with with some uh, some unfortunate moments. It's funny when you think about it, that movie was like had a whole song cut out of it for time when you know it is two hours long, but like you could have cut probably you certainly could have cut the brown faced dancers um, out of the Portadello Road section and and not really lost much of value. Oh, let's do it this way. But anyways, podcasts, podcasts. So, I first started listening to podcasts actually shortly after we first got broadband. And um, I started playing some of those Mamorpagas, you know, the MMORPGs. And growing up, playing like Dream... Well, not growing up and play Dreamcast, but playing like Genesis and Super Nintendo... I would frequently, 
you know, I didn't always have two TVs handy, so what I would frequently do is listen to podcasts. Not po- God. Not podcasts, audiobooks. Couldn't listen to podcasts in the 90s. You know what a pod was? Pod was then you escaped from a starship on. Um, listen to audiobooks. I've actually still got my, my old Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy audiobooks on the shelf in here. Um, I listen to audiobooks while I play, because, I mean, back then, of course, games didn't have any sound to speak of. So, yeah, I would listen to, you know, like Stephen King or Hitchhiker's Guide or whatever. I mean, I'd listen to kind of the same books, because audiobooks were expensive back then. I mean, you kids today with your, with your Audible, you don't understand how expensive an audiobook was back when they were on the cassettes. Um, but I would, yeah, I would listen to those while playing games, because I've always been kind of a multitask, lack of focus person. Is that supposed to connect? Oh, that's not supposed to go there. That's supposed to... Hey! Got our little gas station rack thing. Is that supposed to come up? No, that's... I don't know what the point of that is. Um, and so, you know, naturally... Well, when I, you know, as an adult, I would tend to listen to the radio. I listen to a lot of talk radio uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, before it kind of became something that I didn't want to listen to anymore. Or rather, at least the options for what I wanted to listen to disappeared in my local area. But then we got broadband and started playing the MMOs, and they didn't have much in the way. You know, a lot of the free, free-to-play stuff. I don't even remember the names of these things. They are, I'm sure they are long dead. The only one I ever paid for was uh, Tabula Rasa. It was a Richard Garriott game. You know, the guy who did Ultima Online and all the old Ultima games. Um, yeah, I liked that. I just didn't... I didn't want to pay a monthly subscription because then I feel like I, the same reason I've never played World of Warcraft, I feel like I am obligated to play it if I'm paying a monthly subscription. Um, kind of an issue I have, honestly, I've had to, had a hard time getting through with um, Xbox Live. But, anyways. Is that supposed to be. That doesn't seem right. That isn't right. That's on backwards. Must be on that side. Um, so, I wanted stuff to listen to while I was. No? This way. Okay, I, I think I've screwed this well up. I, I see what I've done. So I wanted to find things to listen to, because I'd heard about podcasts. You know, I, I you know, we had dial-up up until that point, but I'd heard about podcasts, and so I wanted to look into what options there were. And at first I found, like, old radio shows, because I do, like, some of the old radio shows, like uh, The Shadow, and yeah, that's, that's correct. The Shadow and um, Box 13, love Box 13. And, but, you know, you go through those pretty quickly, so I started looking to see what else there was. And I found some podcasts that no longer exist, um, like The Weekly Geek, and I think The Geek Savants was already around at that point. They may have come later. I just searched for the word geek in uh, iTunes. Yeah, hit them. Um, but then I started searching for, like, science fiction, and I found a couple of shows... Uh, which are still around. I found Escape Pod, which is by which I mentioned the other day. It's by Escape Artists. Right, let's end up part one. So let's start part two here. And I found another one called Starship Sofa, which is also still around, but not in the form it was when I was first listening to it. So Escape Pod is. 
Back then, I think a lot more reprint. Now it's a lot more original. Um, short science fiction stories, short being a relative term. I mean, some, some episodes go around an hour. Hosted by various people over the years. Um, I'm not going to mention the original host's name because I don't remember what she goes by now. She no longer goes by that name, and I don't want to use it. Is it, is it Michelle or something? I could look it up. I, I will look it up. Bear with me for a moment. I mean, you've been bearing with me for this long. Of course, now my phone's not going to unlock. Do, do. What is the original host of Escape Pod's name? And it says I have no Wi-Fi, which is weird because I clearly do. Um, I'm probably going to have to cut this stuff out, aren't I? Visible pink unicorns. Sarah Ely. She goes by Sarah Ely now. Sarah Ely was the original host of Escape Pod. Um, and yeah, it was it was good, some, uh, some good shows. Um, I mean, it's a mixed bag. And I'm going to say, I still listen to it. I'm going to say it's, it's maybe a little more hit or miss now than it was back then, but it's still good. Uh, different hosts, they have different hosts like Weekly now, I, but I mean, Sarah Ely, I think, isn't even involved with uh, escape artists anymore. I believe it's owned by, or at least run by, um, oh, the guy from Pseudopod. Alistair, Alistair Stewart. That's who I think just kind of owns and runs it now. This is sticker number two. Um, and then the other one I mentioned was Starship Sofa, which at the time was hosted by Tony Smith and a friend of his, I believe called Kieran. And, uh, they would do they they it wasn't the science fiction story podcast back then. What it was then was a science fiction discussion podcast. The two of them would sit there and discuss authors and shows and I remember way back and I don't think you can even get these anymore. But they had done episodes on I don't know if it was Doug, Ag Doug Douglas Adams in general or Hitchhiker's Guide specifically. But it was one of those two, and they did one specifically on the show Red Dwarf, which I've liked ever since I was in, like, high school. I think that's when I first discovered it. PBS used to play it down in the Bay Area. Um, and, yeah, I would listen to those while playing, playing in the background while I played, you know, these MMOs. And over the years, I mean... You listen to these things, and they talk about other podcasts, and it leads you into other podcasts. So naturally, um, through Escape Pod, I went over to the horror podcast, Pseudopod. Again, another one still going, and still usually hosted by Alistair. I think Mer Lafferty hosted it way back at the beginning, but she's she does a lot of stuff on um, Escape Pod still, but she's gone on to do like, like big writing. She's, you know, she's done like a Star Wars novel and stuff. She's not... A lot of people from them, from there, have kind of graduated onto big things. Um, I think that the original host of um, Podcastle, which is the Escape Artist Fantasy Podcast, has uh, gone on to do bigger and better as well. I know I've, I've heard her name. I want to say I've actually heard her one of her stories 
on uh, NPR Selected Shorts, which to me, I mean, that's, that's an achievement. And one she deserves. Um, I don't remember her name, though. Uh, pod, podcast is one I don't listen to anymore, just because I'm not that big into fantasy, and the stuff that they tend to pick just... I, I prefer more urban fantasy, and the stuff that they tend to pick on there isn't isn't frequently urban, and I don't know, it just it doesn't click with me. And it's, it's okay. It's okay to not like a thing. I'm not saying it shouldn't exist. I'm not saying nobody should like it. I'm just saying it doesn't it doesn't do it for me. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you like it, if you know if you like fantasy, I would definitely tell you to check it out. Um, it's not all swords and sorcery stuff. It's it is a much broader view of fantasy than that. It's not Lord of the Rings type stuff all the time, or I would even say that that often. At least it didn't used to be. So, I mean... But if you like a wide variety of fantasy, it's a good one to check out. Uh, if you like horror, definitely Pseudopod. Uh, if you like science fiction, definitely Escape Pod. Um, so, but back to Starship Sofa. So Starship Sofa has changed. Eventually, Kieran left. Um... Tony, Tony has stayed on ever since. I mean, we're talking, we're talking. It's been years, and Tony Smith is still hosting it. But now it's a, it's a. For a while, it was basically a science fiction magazine. It still sort of is. Um. But it's it's short stories now. It's basically what it is. It's short stories, and they occasionally will have, kind of nonfiction segments. Um, there's a professor called Amy H. Sturgis, who will uh who does um, a look back in the science fiction history, or genre history, because she hasn't just covered just science fiction. Um, and she talks a lot about, well, the history of uh, various genre, including, like, gothic horror and Star Trek and um, stuff stuff I'd never heard of. Interesting, and, you know, I haven't really checked out, but interesting stuff. Um, they used to be, like, podcast reviews and stuff on there, and those aren't around so much anymore. There still is a JJ something who does a science segment every month. Although he keeps talking about stopping because, I guess, you know, real life gets in the way of these sorts of things. Um, But they have also branched out into a couple podcasts that no longer exist, uh, so I won't talk about those. But one that still does exist, which is no longer part of um, the... what do they call it? The uh, Avenue of Wonders or something like that. It was, they had their own little podcast network for a minute. Um, it was... something like that. I. But they used to have, they had a crime podcast and a Pulp Fiction podcast and a fantasy podcast. And I think Starship Sofa's just down to Starship Sofa again now. But the horror horror podcast, uh, Tales of Terrify, does still exist. It's just kind of its own, off on its own now. Um, and they're, again, they originally started out more of a magazine format. They had a segment with a woman who did ghost hunting and um, movie reviews, that sort of thing. And now it's it's kind of just... The format is the host tells something that exists somewhere in the on the line of urban legend and historical fact. At the beginning, usually about whatever place, whatever part of the country that week's episode is supposed to be coming from. Um, and... Then no, there'll be a, a a short horror piece. Generally, the episodes are under an hour. Um, and I, I honestly, I, I'm gonna say I kind of like them today better than. Where is that supposed to? Oh, it's the other side. I kind of like them now, almost better than Pseudopod. Even though Pseudopod was you know, it's been around for ages. I think I kind of like. Um, Tales to Terrify better. Sadly, the original host of Tales to Terrify passed away, I believe, from cancer. And it's sad, because he was... He was a really... 
Because I'm not doing good with names today, so I'm not going to even try um, to give you his name. You can look it up if you really are interested. But I, I think I think his all his episodes are still up there. But yeah, I was sad when he passed away because I, mean, I, I like the new host, the current host. I think they're on the third host now, um, and they've all been good. But yeah, I do miss uh, Santoro, Larry Santoro. That was his name. Yeah, he was he was quite good. But such is life, right? Memento mori. Remember, you shall die. Unavoidable. Anyway, that was depressing. Um, what else do I listen to? So I listen to... So a lot, a lot of the stuff I listened to originally was just kind of short fiction stuff. It was... Uh, I didn't listen to shows, per se. I've only gotten into shows probably in the last seven or eight years. And I, I'm going to... Oh, I'll, I'm skipping some stuff, though. Other stuff I used to listen to, or still listen to, uh, an author called Scott Sigler... Uh, he actually just recently released a book set in the uh, Aliens reality called Aliens Phalanx. But he, you can actually, if you ever look in the background here, I've got some of his books actually on the shelf back here. I think they show up. Those particular ones are from his Galactic Football League series, um, which I'm not into sports, but, you know, I, I am into Aliens. And Aliens playing football is, is eminently more interesting than real people playing football. But I've also got some of his other novels. I have Nocturnal and Ancestor and Pandemic and Infected and Contagious. And um, those three I just read backwards. The, they're actually a trilogy that goes in the opposite of the order that I read the titles in. But the cool thing about the uh, my GFL books there is they're all autographed. Because those were like those are ones that he like self-publishes and they're not they're not as widely available as uh his other ones. But I also listen to an author, and he doesn't, I don't think he has any podcasts up anymore, but you can still, he still does stuff, like you can still buy his ebooks and stuff, an author called J.C. Hutchins, you can kind of see one of his books over there. Um, he did the Seventh Son trilogy, which did get, the first book did get released in Dead Tree format, and I've got it here somewhere. I don't know where that. It's not. It's not on the shelf. But I do have it. I have it here somewhere. Oh, it's over there with uh, with the Scott Sigler and Merle Lafferty's playing for keeps. Um, those are really good, and I, I think the podcasts are long gone of it. But I wouldn't tell you to not go to. I think it's jchutchins.net, and looks like you can still. I think he still sells the eBooks. Of the uh, the Seventh Son trilogy on there, and those are quite good. They're basically about well, I don't. Want, I'll say it, it involves cloning and a plot to kill the president, and I'll leave it at that because to go into too much detail gives away the the gives away the twists. Um. But have I done that wrong? Yeah, I have. Okay, jumping back, jumping ahead to more narrative fiction. Um, I'll go going back to Sigler for a moment. What he's doing right now is uh, he's currently po podcasting the original version of the book Nocturnal. The version he actually did something that well, I mean, he did it before I did, but he did a thing kind of like I did with my Mallville novel, where he was podcasting it like as he wrote it. Um, and that version of the book is drastically different from what was ultimately published. But he's currently repodcasting -pod, re that original like 2007 version of the book. So, I mean, it's, it's interesting to, to hear, you know, a book as it's written kind of a thing. And I'm that's probably part of what inspired me to do uh, Mallville that way. And just kind of post up chapters of it as I was writing it. Alright, so more narrative stuff. I don't remember where I got first got into narrative stuff 
but I'm going to tell you what I listen to. I listen to... Um, and I can kind of link some things together based on what I currently listen to. I listen, of course, to Welcome to Night Vale. Everybody listens to Welcome to Night Vale. They listen to podcasts. And, you know, I've, I've been led on to other shows from that. Of course, the other Night Vale shows, like um, Alice Isn't Dead, It Makes a Sound, um, Within the Wires, which, honestly, the season they just finished up, I think, was quite good. I mean, all three of them have been... Three of them? Four of them. Um, all four of them have been quite good. And I've just discovered that my, uh, my Wi-Fi is down for some reason. My router seems to have reset itself, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's the thing that's happening, so that'll be fun to deal with. Figure out what's going on there. Obviously, if you're seeing this, I've figured it out. But, uh, back to podcasts. Another one I listen to is called Return Home, which um, has been on a rather extended hiatus recently. It's about a... It's a show that initially it seems like it's going to, when you first listen to it, it seems like it's going to be a serious show. Um, a guy who's moved out to California keeps getting these phone calls telling him to return home. And eventually he does, and is attacked by a big winged creature and run off the road and finds out his his uh, dad doesn't remember him existing and his mom is missing. And and it's actually a comedy podcast. It's uh, It gets very silly very quickly. And from that, I've linked, been linked to a couple other podcasts. Um... One called Uncanny County, which is really, really good. Uh, sadly, I think they've pod faded. Um, season two ended with them saying they'd be back in 2019, and it's now 2020. So I, I think it's unfortunately pretty safe to say they have pod faded. Um, but it's an anthology series set in the fictional Uncanny County, where the only character that's in most episodes is the sheriff. And her deputy, uh, Deputy Dillard, who is for some reason always on his first day. And from both of those, I've linked to a podcast called Tunnels, which is one of those ones that's kind of trying to do the uh, the serial thing at first, and in its uh, most recent season, has kind of pretty much completely abandoned that because you run into limitations when you try to do this. Uh, you know, fictional, non-fictional podcast thing in that uh, there's just, there's limits to what you can do telling a story. Eventually you have to, you get to a point where you kind of are just unable to tell the story essentially in camera. You have to, you have to break that, that narrative wall and discuss things that the character shouldn't know about show things that wouldn't wouldn't end up on a podcast. But Tunnels is pretty good. Um, and then there, it's about a, uh, a guy who is kind of uncovering mysteries about his hometown and these tunnels that are under them and these creatures that live in the tunnels. Where does that sit on there? Oh, I guess it doesn't sit on there as long as Emmett's on there. And that led to an offshoot from that podcast called, with some of the same people, called um, Haunted Hell House of Horror, which has only had one season so far. I'm guessing it'll be back probably around Halloween. They did the, um, they recently did like a mini episode as part of an anti-bullying campaign. And that takes place in a, in a haunted house, a like, a no an October haunted house, not an actual haunted house. Not one with actual ghosts. But the kind that are meant to scare you at Halloween time. And, uh... You know, I guess I will stop there, because I've gone well over half an hour. Actually, the card filled up at one point, and I had to go and refill it. So, I guess I will figure out why my Wi-Fi is down. And then I will put this video together and send you... Obviously, we've blown way past the half an hour mark this time, if I filled the card up. So, uh, yeah, tomorrow 
I don't know, Jamal Charge is a little, little smaller? I don't know. I kind of didn't think 174 pieces would take this long. But until then, uh, stay. Well, Got to go through the whole spiel like we normally do, but the quarantine version of it. Uh, make sure that you wash your hands thoroughly, cough into your elbows, practice safe social distancing, and stay healthy. And I will see you in the next video.